is all and there's stage directions too great okay the next <laughs> poet says chuckle the next the next <laughs> poet that's not right this is gonna be when's this gonna be on <laughs> The next <laughs> poet is a man you all know. In 1971, he gained unprecedented and unwarranted pop superstar status playing Keith Partridge on a show about a family of lip-syncing savants. He thought they were a normal suburban family that just happened, uh, happened to Moonlight as the most popular singing group in America. Over the years since then, any real talent he may have had has been completely overlooked, and he has, pre and he has been pretty much, he has, he has pretty much been living off a few lucky financial investments. And the charisma he so shamelessly, shamelessly imitates that his father actually possessed. How did we get him to appear here tonight? Simple, we answered his ad in the trace. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and then apart and together, and then I'll make a kind of a clapping noise for David Cassidy. Thank you, Howie. <laughs> when is this going to be on the mother? Thank you. Very nice to be here. I, uh, I'd like to just take us down for a moment. In a lot of uh, laughter, I'd like to do something serious. Like, um, 
almost like a Prince, Batman, uh, Kim Basinger, sort of Indiana Jones, ninja kind of a thing. You know what I'm talking? Yeah. Only very, very witty. And hum. Like a yak. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe he drive a chopped Harley, so, uh, so he'll give me that sort of Mickey Rourke, Booker, uh, Johnny Deppish, hair on the forehead kind of thing, you know what I'm talking? Yeah, yeah, I think that's gonna work. Now, I'm gonna need the best possible writers in town. Yeah. I think I'll run this by Jimmy Brooks. You think Bobby Town would do a television series? Of course he'd do a television series. With this character? And me attached to it? Are you kidding? Of course I'm going to need someone as good as Bobby Town to write this. If I'm gonna do it for camera tape in front of a live audience. Which is the only way to shoot a piece like this. Yeah. Let's see. I'll exec produce, direct, star, write and perform the theme. The networks will insist on that, of course. Yeah, I'm gonna have to give Bobby Town something. I don't know. What seems fair? Uh, developed by? Sure, that ought to snag him. Uh, now let's see. I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need another character, like a, a neighbor or something. Jimmy Woods. Now. He's funny. And I know he's dying to do a television series with me. Yeah. He, he could be sort of like, uh, sort of like Rhoda to my Biker Mary character. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Are you kidding? They're going to be humming my name in the streets by next season, pal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure, even the parking attendants are going to start remembering my name again. <laughs> well, they'll be... They'll be drawing straws to be parking my car. Hmm? Stories they can... They can tell their grandkids about. The night I parked David Cassidy's car. Can you imagine? Was he really that handsome grandfather? Did he really give you a hundred dollar tip? Of course he did. Because that's, that's just the kind of guy I'm going to be. Yeah. Just as soon as I land that big, big part. For a big, big name like me. <laughs> but until then... Anybody got 10 bucks I can borrow for cab fare home? <laughs> Happiness is... Zimmerman, I'm letting you write my material too, okay? Yeah. You know, David, as pretty 40-year-old men go, you pale next to me. <laughs> of course, you know that. It's something a blind person could see. <laughs> you have got to be joking. Are you nuts? Sell on pain.
pain. You tan sell on pain. How dare you compare your beauty to mine? I'm a glam rock legend, you teen idol slime. Oh, you've got a nerve, you sad, limey twit. You see, I'm me, and you're nothing. You pathetic little shit. I heard you'd gone crazy, and I see that it's true. It's a shame what ten years of obscurity can do. The only way one achieves obscurity is to at one time achieve tremendous fame. A fact you can't relate to, for which your lack of talent is to blame. And just standing this close to you, I can feel your shame. Then this is a night of firsts for you. Since judging by your career, feeling shame is certainly something completely new, Mr. Partridge. You tight trousered fag. worn rather tight, which I happen to know looks just right. <laughs> but what about those trick-or-treat Al Pacino and black leather chaps you wear like an English sissy who lost a dare? You're 40 years old, baby cakes. Get a life for Christ's sakes. <laughs> More important than a life to a man like yourself, how about a new hairstyle, you shag-cutted elf? <laughs> My God, you must be totally deranged. It's been 20 years and your hair hasn't changed. Here's a little tip for a loser like you. It's called a trademark, which explains my do. I remember your trademark. Yes. How timeless it was. Betty Davis makeup, a dress, and a cocaine buzz. You're so jealous of me. It's ugly. It's sad. Do you really think my career is that bad? Oh, who am I to say you're no good? I mean, after all, let's be honest. My career ain't that good. Well, David, I must say, I've been sort of a fan. Um, and I'm, I am sorry about the fag line. I know you're a real man. Yeah, well, I guess I'll say I'm sorry, too, that there's got to be something worse than being you. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's a compliment, I guess. Uh, if I look at you closely, you're, you're you're not a complete mess. Yes, and you're not a loser. You've just had some bad breaks. I know lots of people have made your kind of endless mistakes. Yes, and I'm sure you could have parlayed your success into something better than a pathetic jest. Okay, we, we're just getting nasty. Uh, yes, we 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 listen. We got to stop this. We're middle-aged men. That's right. We're grown-ups. Adults, for God's sake. Yes, we're not really vain, shallow jerks. David, do you think this jacket works? <laughs> On you, it's a gem. Have you seen my boots? boots. Had to made it at a place called Hoots. I love that store. But if you want great shades... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All of her peoples. I had them made. You mean you actually have your sunglasses made? 
I'm David Cassidy, pal. Yeah. I gotta look cool. Of course you do. You're not telling lies. You need something to cover those bags under your eyes. From a man who is so secure that he bathes in collagen. Oh, what your weathered flesh is forced to endure. Yes, that's what I said. Oh, I'm so sorry. Excuse me. I, I forgot how your accompliment, accomplishments tower above. Of course, you are the man who gave us... I think I love you. So what am I afraid? So afraid of? You are an L.A. club whore. And you're a bubblegum blowhard. You're a sleaze merchant. Jack trash. Ah. All right. You know what we sound like? It, it fills me with fear. Yeah. Mm. Yes. A couple of bitchy old Hollywood queers, I was <laughs> My God, David, do you know what this means? Yeah, these people all think we're vain, nasty queens. <laughs> hey, Dave. Yeah. Dave, uh, did you catch that ball game last night? Yeah, sure. See the big herds fight? Yeah. yeah. I dug it, of course. Get right, man. Fuck get right. Let's go talk to some babes, Dave. Yeah, and fast. That didn't rhyme. Fuck the poetry. We got images to worry about. <laughs> God, it's like music to my ears. Dinner theater in Akron, but never mind. It's another story. Okay, now it's time for me to introduce our next <laughs> poet. God, that was good direction too, wasn't it? What the? Uh, what comes to mind? when you hear the name Willie Ames. <laughs> After who's that? <laughs> For me, I'm always reminded of a train. Well, not the whole train. The caboose of the train. The strong, sturdy little car whose job it is to follow, spitting and jogging, the beautiful, shiny locomotive section. The caboose never gets the credit for doing what it does best, clinging tight to the rest of the train, <laughs> pulled along over whatever rough terrain the engineer chooses. Always the dirty little car. <laughs> The battered car. The car only bums and derelicts latch onto for a ride. Is there any happiness for a caboose? Thankfully, I don't know, but Willie Ames probably does. So be kind to Willie. He, he's been over a lot of rough terrain. Ladies and gentlemen, Willie Ames. 